Feature Friday. The freshest. <laughs> Okay, so we haven't actually checked out this performance of Sara Jeronimo performing Beyonce live. Everybody's going absolutely nuts in the crowd. I saw the beginning and I thought, yes, this, this yeah, is it's, it. It's quite an old one, but we've never checked it out. Yeah, let's, let's right. give it a watch. I think it's Asap Nothing Too. Oh, I don't know. It is definitely on TV though. Ooh, okay. You go, girl. Those guys are actually wearing sauna, weight cutting suits. Imagine yeah. dancing in that shit. No, crazy. That's it what is, that looks crazy. like. Some of, some of the stuff fighters use to cut weight. In case you don't know what cutting weight means, it means losing weight, but which, which water actually, weight, yeah, not okay. not not weight, not actual weight. You're just losing water. Uh, you're dehydrating the fuck out of yourself. So very dangerous. dangerous. Um, a lot of fighters do it because they have to adhere to requirements. Normal people, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but just cut weight the right way, just shred the right way, uh, just, I don't know what the fuck I'm giving advice on this, but I'm just saying, imagine dancing on that shit, no, absolutely sweating insane. buckets, you it know. is crazy though, although I do like the uh, color aesthetic that it provides, yeah, it's, it's, really, <laughs> it's really cool on stage, yeah. and the Philippines, warm as hell, Those dancers are eating. Oh, nice crowd. She looks beautiful as well. She's such a pop like uh, I personification of, yeah. of the genre itself. harder than having to do what she's doing because it's subtle choreo but it still requires a lot of vocal energy because those shifts on on the and on the body and the the structure of, of this uh, of the uh, breath flow it will totally dictate what comes out of your mouth and it's so cool that in her case up to this point everything has been so We're stable and i love that you can see like you know the the fiddling with the the in ears everything is so organic and so Bro, so true on, to the moment. Even on rehearsal runs, when you know the Ines might have been sort of a, they they fell right both of them in. There's so many variables at play during oh, yeah. the day that and those type of things. That's why like live performers like Sara, or you know some of my favorites like KZ. Obviously, Regine's very good at this as well. Um, but it, it's really interesting is to see their adaptability, their capability to adapt in circumstances where they you know the lights are on and uh, you're you're playing live. So that that's what makes this performance kind of the highest level not just the technical aspect of things, but their adaptability. Well, obviously one of the huge um, variables here is the crowd, because <laughs> when you're on technical runs and you're uh, calibrating everything, technically speaking, so like your in-ear feed, uh, your microphone levels and all of these things, they do take into consideration that the crowd will be there, but it's completely different to when the, ac the crowd is actually in the place that changes a lot of the of the stimulation that you get. So it's it's really cool to see the the interaction yep. in the moment. We love you, sir. Nice. I like the combative feel. 
that videographer nearly died. <laughs> She decided to do that shit on her knees. Nice. Nice delay. <laughs> You know, Bravo. I've always thought of this, like, it's so interesting to me how there's, like, sub-worlds, right? So, like, for example, you know, so Beyonce released this, right? Mm -hmm. And she performs it live. Um, I cannot imagine the fact that she thought, you know, hundreds of th or thousands of kilometers away, um, there will be other industries where there's other really famous and high-caliber singers, but they will perform this stuff on television yeah. and cover that song. I, I don't... Because people think, yeah, you know, that song is really popular. It probably gets played all over the world. But it's like, it's not just popular. It then becomes sub-popular in sub-genres and sub-industries of the music industry in different ge ge uh, 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 different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, and it's like, who the fuck would have known that? Like, for example, in our case, like, you know, now it's been like, we're about to turn three in October uh, with the podcast and things like that and the channel. And it's like now we kind of know that, you know, like Asia has a whole bunch of industries and Europe has a bunch of industries. But I don't think the average person knows. That's correct. You know what I mean? do Cause, agree. Because we can't just get stuck in this bubble that like because we, we are learning about this stuff. We kind of presume everyone else does as well. Well, but, you got to also take into consideration that three years ago we didn't have a clue. No, not a fucking That's clue. Right. And mm -hmm. that some of the best singers in the world that you might, you might adore, you might not even know their names yet. Yeah, that's you know what true. I mean, and, and that's why I find it so funny about the channel that every you know so many different from all over the world watch the UK, the US, Canada, India, South Korea, and all that stuff. And it's like the Philippines, and it's like you we wouldn't you know she's like one of our favorites to watch and stuff like that. But we would have never known that's right if it wasn't for sort of the channel and the internet and things like that. So it's just mental. I wonder what Beyonce would like would think of that. I don't know if she's even aware. No, you know I, I, mean? I would think yeah at her level that that there's definitely. I think there's a definite uh, being aware of this. She wouldn't know that in, in different industries. I think people she would. cover her songs. Not people, really artists. fucking famous yeah, artists, artists yeah. cover her shit. I do think so. I do think so because it's it's so big. Like the movement is so big. You, you think like Beyonce would know about like the Malaysian music industry? Hell no, bro. I but she it. would know that the biggest Malaysian artist, she, if she covered her, she would know about that. You think? I would think so. That's so interesting to me. Because these guys are so famous. That's the thing. It's like, I don't know, like millions for millions of followers and fans and stuff. People, so fans so dedicated. Uh, mm. And it's like, I don't know, man. Don't it's know. so funny to me. It is a really yeah, yeah. interesting question, right? So I don't I don't really know. But to, to go back to this performance, though, it must have been absolutely insane to witness that live in the moment, like part, as part of the crowd. Because the energy, the energy was so, it's, it, like cinematic Probably. and obviously yeah and it, it was really powerful because not only what she gave out and her performers her dancers gave out it was also being reciprocated it reciprocated in the other way around so the audience was also giving out energy to the to the performer and so that's really cool to witness yeah lately we've been it watching it becomes really euphoric we've been watching we've been going to a lot of concerts and stuff like yeah. that especially from may to now and uh it, yeah i mean it, it that's one of the best things of being able to actually see this stuff live and i think you guys know that we're involved in the one mx which is actually the first uh filipino music festival that we're ever going to go to um so that's also going to be really interesting to see different crowds at different demographics obviously interact with different ways so we want that's you know part of the channel for us to not only review this stuff on the couch but now to actually live it and experience it so it's super cool to be able to do with like Korean music and the Indian in music industry. And we haven't yet done it with the Filipino, which is one of our favorites. Correct. Uh, but so interesting to do, like I'm really intrigued in doing the Japanese mm -hmm. concerts. And uh, we've been to like US artist based concerts. Uh, they're completely different vibes, man. I'm telling completely you, so different. different. Um, and like, I think each, each music industry has their own 
peculiarity when it comes to like uh, live music performances and yeah. like the environment that they create as well. True, like the so, fans are so different in different yes, concerts. It's yes. so mad. It might even be the same people, but their vibes change. Correct. Which is fucking yeah. super, like to me, it's like, wow, that's mental. It's as if, it's as if you're walking through a mood in each playlist. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. as if, if you're going to a specific artist, you know exactly what the mood is going to be, uh, as if you put on the playlist. Like we met some Filipino super fans uh, that, that watch the channel, and they also like Korean music, and they were there in the festival this weekend here in London last weekend and uh, their vibe was completely different to like the vibe of some of like the Korean fans that we, we met over there and then we met some Japanese fans and they were completely different vibe and uh, then there was like the UK and there were some Canadian fans and there was like some guys that came all the way from like Montana oh that and, was uh, really fun well, those videos guys. haven't been posted you guys just keep watching all this just keep being tuned and you'll get to see everything but it's like very fun stuff yeah yeah but obviously geography culture and everything like that plays a part but also the genre and the industry in which you're mm -hmm. going to play such a ginormous mm. fucking role in that. But anyways, let, let us know what you guys thought about it. And obviously what other performances live like these, because you guys know we enjoy live stuff. Should we check out next? Okay, goodbye. goodbye.